All in. Having been sentenced to 10 years in prison, I learned to count cards. How'd you do that? Hi again, everyone. My name is Brant James, lead writer at Play USA. This is the Hey USA podcast. And luckily, once again, I am joined by Nick Garcia, senior writer at Play USA. Nick, how are you? I'm doing well. The uh, White Sox, lucky number two. So two. Hope, hopefully they get a win. So they're playing, as we are recording, they're playing the Detroit Tigers to what I think is a stadium full of 10 people. So if we could if we could get that win, we're we're our lucky numbers one to make the playoffs. So uh, the weekend was pretty good. What about yourself? I was good, as you can see by my snazzy shot behind me. That was my view in Morgantown, West Virginia, where I dared the fates and went to watch the alma mater play the Virginia Tech Hokies and beat them. Um, and along the way, uh, I made it into a one one thousandth of a percent of a work junket. West Virginia legal sports betting state. I'd never placed a legal bet there. So we can officially go West Virginia is crossed off. I've now added that. That's number eight, Delaware, Illinois, Iowa, Nevada, New Jersey, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and West by God, Q country roads, just like after that big win over Virginia (laughs) tech, that's eight out of the 24 states where sports betting is legal and jurisdictions. Hey, DC where uh, sports betting is legal and currently underway. I think our listeners would like to know if you won your bet. I did. Uh, It was the Mountaineers uh, two and a half. I was skeptical about it. So I only bet two, three (laughs) hundred thousand dollars and you can do the math. We'll uh, (laughs) we'll put that up. But uh, obviously I didn't I didn't get rich because uh, even though I do this for the love, I'd probably be yacht shopping if I really crushed it. So So, uh, what do we got on the docket today? What what should uh, we be? discussing well as, as you could probably tell from the that odd beginning with that gentleman uh playing poker um as part of my daring return to society i went to a movie theater uh Could but I? again work related I went, yeah. it was work related and i went to see uh, the new film the card counter uh obviously a gambling themed film mm-hmm. um and uh you know to check out what they got right and what they got wrong i was able to reach uh, Joe Stapleton. Uh, folks might know him as a content creator, commentator for Poker Stars, an aspiring uh, screenwriter and Hollywood yeah. kind of guy moved out to L.A. to do that. So we talked to him to, uh, for a bit. Uh, he was on uh, set and his job was to make sure they got uh, the poker stuff right. So that was pretty interesting. And how accurate is the poker stuff like in that film? I, it stars Oscar Isaac, I believe. He, I, I like him. He's in some good stuff. It does. And it's uh, it's written by uh, Paul Schrader, uh, most famously uh, wrote um, Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, um, nice. which are fairly highly regarded Classics. movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't put this in the stratosphere with that, but it's an interesting film. Um, it, it It's good. Um, as uh, Joe Stapleton tells me uh, in our in our interview, and we'll link to the story for that in the description. Um, card counting is generally most associated with blackjack uh, card counting as, as in the quants figure it out and then get thrown out of the casino, but then become <laughs> sort of egghead heroes. It's done in poker, but for different reasons, but it's an entertaining film and it gets it right uh, for the, for the folks who play cards, who know what they're doing. And that's important because uh, it's an odd film because it's half casinos. It's a gambling movie, but it's also a movie about, Abu Ghraib and torture and redemption. <laughs> uh, weird combination. They mostly pull it off. Uh, the casino industry and, and you know gambling, it's not a love letter uh, yeah. to that industry, but when you juxtapose it against Abu Ghraib, uh, most anything else would, would look great. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it's done well. Um, there's a lot of informative bits in there. Um, either it's going to hook you or it's going to turn you immediately off because uh, there's about a two minute dissertation on card counting and blackjack which immediately made my head swim um but but you go with it it's fun Uh, there's a lot of tidbits in there it's good stuff that's good and that's in theaters right now people can go check that out it is it's in theaters right now but it's not in a lot of theaters it's sort of a niche on the edge of art film so you're gonna have to uh maybe go a couple layers into your fandango but there's some (laughs) cool stuff in there There, there's a, a few tidbits that it's almost sort of a an you know, in, in like a seminar, maybe a little bit, uh, yeah. five or 10 seconds of Ted talk every once in a while, there's a scene where uh, the main character, William Tell, that, that was actually my 
biggest beef with the movie. <laughs> his name is William Tellich, but he changes his name to William Tell. That is so distracting. It's as if Robin Hood was taken. Why can't he yeah. just be Bob, you know, Bob Johnson? I have no <laughs> idea. Um, he, he has a line where he says, if you're ever going to go to a casino, your best bet is to go to the roulette wheel and, and, and put it on red. It's a 47.4% chance to win you know basically don't go play the slots and and another um he's telling a sidekick of his um they're talking about sports betting he loves delaware yeah. park he's on the casino circuit uh, the card playing circuit and he tells his buddy that unless you have inside information sports betting is just for fun so that's a that made for a good chuckle but probably nothing that DraftKings, FanDuel, and all their peers wanted to hear but yeah if you're into gambling you know uh go give it a shot it, it's it's uh you know it's an entertaining movie that's good stuff. Do we have anything else or are we monitoring anything this week? Uh, I was interested to see uh, how Caesars uh, is into the state of Louisiana. Uh, already we have the Caesars uh, Superdome. And yeah. just this week, uh, they entered into a, a content uh, partnership with NOLA.com, which is sort of all the big state papers, uh, yeah. online platforms, The Advocate. And the Times Picayune, awesomely named newspaper uh, out of New Orleans, to become the official odds platform and content uh, outlets, which is my goodness, five years ago, would we ever <laughs> have thought this would have happened? And then on uh, late last week, uh, they drop a uh, a massive uh, official sports betting partner with LSU. LSU yeah. first college football. I mean, yeah, that's that's nuts. Have we ever heard of a sports book partnering with like a like a newspaper or I mean like just straight up partnership with that. Is that something new? Have oh, USA Today new? has, has one. Uh, I think the AP um, added FanDuel as its official odds provider uh, a few months ago. Um, Yahoo, I believe is with BetMGM. Um, it's, it's good because I think a lot of us have been frustrated uh, with otherwise very good reporters and very solid news yeah. outlets who you know, started to dabble in the lines of, of uh, sports contests and unknowingly were linking, you know, offshore books, you know, yeah. the, uh, ones that we won't name, but from the, from the Caribbean or, or from where have you. And uh, like, why are you doing this? You realize that that is gray at best, but a black market, you know, most likely, you know, certainly. Um, so as odd as it is, especially for someone uh, who spent so much time in uh google newspapers it was a yeah. thing uh, for a while it's really weird but i'm glad that at least um it's sort of centralizing under legal american markets and there's some standards and practices now in a sports book partnering with a college lsu mm -hmm. that is nothing new there's there's a yeah. who's the book in colorado that's partnered with a few universities points bet. there points, points bet. bet yeah and uh just recently last week the university of denver apparently this is a very hot thing in colorado i think it was a uh, superbook uh, okay. out of Nevada, uh, partnered nice. with them. Yeah. Um, it's still fairly uncommon. Um, I, I, it's going to be really interesting to see if, if other SEC, uh, Southeastern Conference states open up, whether they'll do this too. I mean, Tennessee yeah. is there, Mississippi in a very limited way. But, you we'll know, chip, goes. chip, chip. We'll see, yeah. see how it goes. Um, is there anything that you're uh, writing wise that are uh, listeners and viewers should keep an eye out from you? anything top yeah. secret no nothing top secret just watch out for some uh we're obviously it being nfl season we're, we're starting to roll out a bunch of content there i'm working on some egg heady type stuff about um how covid might have affected home field advantage uh for certain teams so we're kind of looking at uh teams home teams against the spread pre-covid during it and early sample but seeing how they're doing now so interesting sometimes we like to play with the numbers here so keep looking for that click yeah. click 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 until it's there that's right. Um, I guess with that, we got a good segue into making brands picks of the weeks. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep this one a little bit short. We both went one and two last week. Not many of our bets hit. I did get the Cowboys right. Lost on the Bengals. Uh, Rams did not cover the spread. Um, so for my picks this week, Saints over New England, money line. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Bucks, Bucks, Rams over 55 and a half. Mm -hmm. And then your Seahawks minus two. Uh, let's check real quick who they're going. Do you, do you recall who they're going up against? I think they're going up oh, against Minnesota on the road who should have beaten the Cardinals, but 
they can kick field goals. So Seahawks Go minus figure. two on the road. I'm taking them. They you can like cover. That. Wow. What about yourself? I, I wouldn't take that, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm hurt inside. Maybe it's because I'm hurt inside. I, I'm not ready to forgive. All right. Uh, you ready for mine? Yeah, let's hear it. I mean, I couldn't have gone one and two because I took a, f- a futures bet in there. That one gets pushed off. I'm one and did one with a, with a pause. Did you take a futures bet? You I did. did. The, I, took, I took Seahawks oh, to win the, the Seahawks. Super Bowl. That's what it was. Yeah, you're right. That's my so you, new plan. I'm going to, I'm going to, if I ever get ahead, I'm going to start packing <laughs> futures bets and run out the clock until you, you get tired and we don't check this anymore. So that's so far. So, so, so for, for editors out there, we, we had the Browns at minus 12. Uh, and you had the Bears, which we both we we both took the Bengals and they both lost. So yes, you did go one and one. Uh, I went one and two for the there. Week. You go. All right. So what do we got? What do which we feel, got? Which feels like utter domination to me. Okay. <laughs> Over at DraftKings, Lamar Jackson. Uh, he's got to have uh, ninety nine and a half rushing yards, one ninety nine point five passing, a touchdown, and uh, a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown plus four hundred. That seems reasonable. Yeah. They're playing what the, the Lions or something. He's the I think best player on the field. So totally, totally feasible. Totally feasible. Yeah. And then um I went with an alternate uh alternate spread uh at Bucks to beat the Rams by seven to twelve points. I know I'm surrounded by Bucks fans living here in the Tampa Bay area, but they just feel inevitable unless Tom Brady's arms just fall off. <laughs> they just do. And the odds on that plus five hundred. Uh, yeah, that, that seems good against Tom. Yeah, it seems great. And uh, Falcons are a consensus uh, uh, pick to just uh, money line to beat the Giants. Uh, plus 139. I like that. So I'm going Falcons. I'm, I'm suddenly on the Corderell Patterson bandwagon. I think he's just going to dance and dance into the end zone. Good. Uh, well, you heard it there, folks. Um, with that, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, check out the rest of our stuff. We got all our, all our episodes up on uh, our channel. So feel free to give them a watch, give them a like. Uh, With that, you guys know what to do.